to Monday's Daily Dose of Medicine. We're gonna start with those 10 belly breaths. Remember, in through the nose, we're thinking about filling up that can 360. So we wanna push out, front and back, as well as down. You can do that standing, you can do it laying. I prefer to do it laying, it just is easier for me to really reinforce pushing out 360 when I'm laying on the ground. Once we've done that, we're gonna do two rounds of our warm up. 30 single unders, so in my case, I probably should have grabbed a rope. I'm, I don't know why I always manage to forget the rope when doing single unders. But if we don't have a rope, we can just do 30 hops in place. From there, we're gonna do 10 total lunge steps, or five per leg. Remember with the lunge step, as we come out, heel should strike. We're gonna get that trailing knee to the ground. I'm gonna drive up through the heel to come back. If we're doing a walking lunge, same principle. As I step down, I'm gonna drive through my heel to stand up before I then take another step forward. We're then gonna do 10 Russian baby makers. So heels are gonna be outside of the hips. I like to go a little bit wider than my air squat so that I really get a good long stretch through the hips as they open. From here, I'm gonna take my hands. I'm gonna grab my toes. So again, legs are somewhat straight. I don't really care the angle of your back. From here, I'm going to pull against my toes to bring my chest nice and tall. So this would be one. Hip would come up. Two. So we're going to do that for ten. Once we've gotten through that, we're going to go ahead and do day one Murph prep. You guys, it's eight weeks out from Murph, and I kind of want to throw up of excitement as well as dread. All right, so we're pushing it to Saturday, July 4th. So we've got eight weeks that we're gonna work specifically Monday, Wednesday, Friday on doing some preparation to get ready for the Merc. Every 90 seconds, so minute and a half, you're gonna do three pull-ups. If we don't have pull-ups, we can grab a kettlebell. If you've got a dumbbell handy, a barbell, we're going to do six bent over rows. With a bent over row, heel is going to go underneath the hip, chest is going to come forward. I'm going to physically pull through that upper back, hold for a second at the top, and then back down. So one, two, so we're going to do six of those. Three pull ups, six bent over row. We're then going to go into four push ups. Remember with our push-up, we're looking for wrist, elbow, shoulder to be stacked on both sides. Nice straight body position, chest to the deck, back to full extension. And then we'll drop into eight air squats. Heels outside of the hips. Remember the, the goal with the air squat is to keep the heels rooted, but also keep the ball of the foot down. So we want a nice even kind of distribution so that we're not in the ball of the foot. We're also not back in the heel. From there, we're gonna look to get hip creasing the knee, coming back to that full standing position. So within a 90 second window, we're gonna do all of those movements. Three pull-ups, four push-ups, eight air squats. If you find that that is easy, Drop it down to 60 seconds. So in a 60 second window, you do that same amount of work, right? So we're just changing that time of that rest to work ratio. That's our Murph prep today. Super simple, because it's day one. From there, we're gonna go into our workout of the day. So our workout of the day, if we've got a sandbag, go ahead and grab that, pull that out. In this case, I've got a 30 pound gel ball, which would work fine. Um, if we've got a, happen to have a stone at home, cool. Um, if we don't, we can always use a barbell and do a power clean here in, in case we need to um, work with what we've got, which we know that's kind of where we're at these days. If we are doing a sandbag or a stone to shoulder, we're going to look to have a weight that we can scoop, meaning it's going to come from the ground to my shoulder in one movement. We want the weight to start as under us as possible. So I often think some of the same cues that we use for deadlifts where we cut um, the ball in half, that would be our barbell, and I'm gonna line my laces up with that midline. From here, I'm gonna start and end with a bent arm. I'm gonna get my hips as close to the ball as I can. I'm gonna drive up through the hip first, snap through, 
with the hips to finish. So what we want to try to avoid what happens is we end up with this like rounded back, over exaggerated lean. Instead, we want to load those hamstrings so we're getting nice and taut through the hamstring and then let it snap through to create a moment of weightlessness where we then would get our sandbag or in this case our gel ball up to our shoulder. We would drop it back down. From there, we're going to do 10 lateral burpees over our object. Again, in this case, a uh, uh, gel ball, but we have written it as a sandbag, so we would come down, chest and quad to the deck. I would then have both feet take off, both feet land, opposite side of the object. If you don't trust yourself to go over a high target, find a seam in the carpet, um, put down a tape line, and just go over that. But we want the lateral hop for both the equipped and the other equipped workout today. Once I've done those 10 burpees, I'm then going to hold object at the chest. So we're looking to have that weight really sitting on the sternum. One arm is going to wrap around. My opposite hand is then going to hold onto my arm. And I'm going to pull that weight as tight in as I can. I'm then going to take it for a 100 foot walk. We're going to do that for five rounds. If we have a set of dumbbells, right, other equipped, we're going to keep the same scheme. We're going to do 10 dumbbell hang cleans. From here, head of the dumbbell, we're going to keep that down at the knees. So when we think about coming down, knees are going to come forward, meaning we want to avoid that crashing in. Head of the dumbbell goes down, hips go back, chest drops forward. We're going to drive open with the hip. Ideally, we'll wait until that hip and knee are fully extended before we pull the head of the dumbbell up to the shoulder, dropping it back down. So we're trying to keep the dumbbell along the body as much as possible versus bicep curl sway. You with me? Cool. Same lateral burpee we want to try and have in play. We would set the dumbbells next to each other, chest and quad to the deck, both feet take off, both feet land. Again, same principle. If you don't trust yourself going over an object, find a crease in your carpet, put down a, a, a line of tape, or just laterally think about jumping side to side. So we want that lateral catch. We're then going to take our object, be it uh, dumbbells, kettlebells, we're going to do a farmer's carry. Same 100 feet. When we get to the other side, we would then start on our next set of cleans. Once we have completed our five rounds, we're going to do some recovery work. In our finisher section today, we've got the couch stretch, always a crowd favorite. Front leg, essentially, is going to be in that bottom of lunge position. Back leg is going to come up on the wall. Remember with this stretch, guys, our priority is this back hip. So opening up that hip flexor. So I, I don't care how far back you get your shoulders. I'm more worried about how far open can you get your hip. So if that means that you need to keep your forearm on your leg and just really focus on opening up that hip, totally fine. It's not wrong. Once we've got a minute on each leg, we're going to drop into a pigeon or a figure four. Here we do want to try and get down onto our forearms and really force the outside of that hip to stretch. If it's too much, stay up on your hands. Give yourself a little bit of relief there. Totally fine as well. That is your fun for today. See you guys tomorrow.